The cave sponsor, Father Ben Carter, would like to dedicate this video to his two daughters, Finley and Sawyer Carter. And for the kids, a poem. A wise old owl sat in an oak. The more he heard, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why aren't we all like that wise old bird? Now, listen up. The cave wins by collapsing itself on the intruders. In order to do so, the cave must place all cave tiles, then destroy cave tiles until five crystal tiles have collapsed. Time to set up. If no knight is in the game, treasure cards, event cards, and event tokens remain in the box. First, tokens. Omen tokens are placed in this draw bag. Then, 10 treasure tokens are placed on the player board. If a thief player exists, add two more. The crystal, event, and rock slide tokens are placed near the cave board as well. The treasure deck and event deck can be placed nearby after being shuffled. Finally, three cave tiles are drawn from the stack. This is the cave's hand. The cave's turn is resolved in three phases. Collect omen tokens, shape the cave, place treasure. Phase one, collect omen tokens. First, a number of omen tokens are collected based on the number of treasure tokens plus crystal tokens currently on the map. For example, if a total of zero on the map, one is drawn. If a total between two and three are on the map, three are drawn. Note, if the thief claims a treasure token, it is still counted during the phase for the omen token draw. Once the thief stashes that token, however, it no longer counts and cannot be placed on the map for the remainder of the game. Any time during the cave's turn, the cave may use an omen by discarding omen tokens equal to its cost back to the draw bag. Each omen shows what omen tokens are required in order to be fulfilled. The player must discard any combination of the symbols shown, even the same symbol multiple times. An omen may be used any number of times as long as the player pays its cost. The omen rock slide allows a player to place a rock slide token on any edge between two tiles that does not already have a wall. This token acts as a wall. The cost for this omen is two omen tokens of any of these three types. Unused omen tokens are safe for later turns. On the past plunder and hatred omens, there are three separate costs from left to right. This indicates the cost for the first, second, and third use on the same turn. Any further uses always cost the highest amount. Phase two, shape the cave. The cave chooses a tile from its hand and places it dark side up adjacent to any tile on the map. If there are any crystal tiles in the cave's hand, these must be placed before placing any other tiles. Tiles placed on the other player's turns do not have to be crystal tiles. Whenever the cave places a cave tile, a new one is immediately drawn to the player's hand to replace it. When the cave is filling open edges, it may do so in any order. The cave may also examine dark tiles on the map at any time, but are not revealed to anyone else. Once the cave places its final tile, the collapse begins on the cave's next turn. Phase three, place treasure. The cave player places a treasure token on a dark tile that does not contain a player piece or treasure token. If no such tile exists, no treasure token is placed. The cave's turn changes when the collapse begins. During the shape the cave's phase of the cave's turn, the cave will remove tiles from the cave instead of placing them. Three tiles are removed each turn. If no cave player exists, each player removes three tiles at the end of their own turn instead. Tiles touching only one tile must be removed first, then tiles that touch only two tiles. If a dark tile is removed, it is revealed to show whether or not it was a crystal tile. If any tile with a token is removed, the token is returned to the supply of whoever owns the token. Note, if a revealed crystal tile can be removed, it must be removed first. Also, the entrance tile may never be removed, so don't touch it. If any crystal tokens are removed during the collapse, they do not count towards any victory conditions. When removing a tile with the player piece, that player may first move to an adjacent tile in order to remain on the map. If there is no adjacent tile that would not prompt an attack, the cave must choose a different tile. Once five crystal tiles have been removed, the cave collapses and the game ends. The cave wins even if no one is actually playing the cave and all other players lose. Sometimes, the dragon uses his wrath powers to collapse tiles and the goblins may use cave in during play. These work as follows. Before the collapse, any collapsed crystal tiles were removed and count towards the cave's victory condition. All other collapsed tiles are placed at the bottom of the cave tile stack. During the collapse, all collapsed tiles were removed from the game and crystal tiles count toward the cave's victory condition. The cave has much to do with treasures and these rules are covered in the each respective character video. The cave is also the master of events. 
Whenever the knight triggers an event, the cave draws three event cards and chooses one to play. The other cards are placed at the bottom of the event deck. Played event cards are removed from the game. If no more event cards remain, they are not reshuffled and further events are ignored. The cave may examine the top three cards of the event deck at any time. A note on rock slides. Once all three have been placed, the cave may move one when using the proper omen. If either tile the rock slide is bordering is rotated or removed, the rock slide is returned to the cave. And this concludes our video on the cave. The executive sponsor of this series is Mario Flores. The wall sponsors are Galahad777 and Zen L.